Welcome back. We have the feds versus the landlords, lawyers hammering each other, and all of us against COVID. My name's Ike Morgan, and we're down in Alabama. The Biden administration has made its argument in a Supreme Court case against the Alabama Association of Realtors over the evictions moratorium, according to a report from the New York Daily News and Tribune Media Services. The moratorium, of course, was put into place last year after businesses were shut down due to the COVID-19 pandemic and unemployment spiked. Unemployment is way back down, but after the eviction moratorium lapsed, the CDC stepped in and extended the ban, which didn't thrill realtor groups. Landlords make their money off rent, after all, and they've argued that a health organization has no business making such economic decisions. Earlier this year, the U.S. Supreme Court voted 5-4 to four to allow the moratorium to continue, but the decision noted that the moratorium did have that expiration date in July. On Monday, the White House filed a response with Chief Justice John Roberts, Acting Solicitor General Brian Fletcher, quote, The CDC has warned that the public health consequences of an increase of evictions at this time would be very difficult to reverse. Chief Justice Roberts might simply end the evictions moratorium as requested by the realtors or let the full court hear the case. Yesterday, the FDA gave its full and final approval to Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine, and healthcare officials in Alabama are hoping that'll help get our vaccination rate up and help us turn the corner on the current spike in cases and hospitalizations that we're seeing. And, as someone who does part of his work in audience engagement, I can vouch that the lack of official final approval for a vaccine has seemed to be a major issue for many Alabamians who were discussing the pros and cons of getting vaccinated. Now, the Associated Press is now reporting that Alabama ranked fourth in the U.S. for the most new cases per capita over the 14-day period ending August 21st. Only Louisiana, Mississippi, and Florida had more new cases. And if you're a geography ace, you'll recognize that two of those states are on our border. Now, according to the latest statistics from the Alabama Hospital Association, 84% of adults who are hospitalized for COVID-19 are unvaccinated. In recent weeks, you know the Gulf Coast and Mobile have been hot spots for COVID spread. Well, officials at Mobile Spring Hill Medical Center told WKRG that they had 102 COVID patients at the time, Only seven of those had been vaccinated. In the competition among personal injury lawyers, the fight can sometimes bleed over the line from marketing and advertising and into actual law. That's what's happened recently as the Alabama Hammer has become the target of a lawsuit by the Texas Hammer, reports AL.com's William Thornton. The Alabama Hammer, of course, is Mike Slocum. He handles vehicle accidents, wrongful death suits, medical malpractice, and more. He has offices in three Alabama cities and seven other states, including Texas. In his advertising in Alabama, he's the Alabama Hammer, but elsewhere uses nicknames such as the D.C. Hammer and simply Hammer. A lawsuit has been filed by Jim Adler, who has billed himself as the Texas Hammer since the 90s. Now, the suit claims that Slocum has engaged in copyright and trademark infringement and unfair competition. It accuses Slocum of creating TV commercials that copy Adler's TV commercials, quote, virtually shot by shot and line by line. For example, there are spots from both Adler and Slocum that have the attorneys heroically facing down 18-wheelers, holding sledgehammers, and using some similar phrasing. The suit also argues that Google searches for Texas Hammer actually pulls up Slocum's number first, so when you use your cell phone to just click to call, you may end up talking to, according to one perspective, the wrong hammer. Lawyer Slocum's lawyers have argued that Adler doesn't have trademarks for Slocum's hammer nicknames and that he has discontinued a TV spot that was at issue. Also, they pointed out that back when Adler was getting Texas Hammer trademarked, he stated that he would not be confused with another lawyer, the Kentucky Hammer. Now, I'm not a lawyer, and I'm not just saying that to brag, 
but if I had a share of Hammer and Hank Aaron's estate, I'd be ready to take on the winner here. Thank y'all for listening. We'll be back here again tomorrow. Until then, stop by and see us anytime you want to. We're on the World Wide Web at AL.com. Thank you.